court ruling in Rivers State causes unease in Abuja. The court says states, not the federal government, should collect value-added tax. Nigeria ranks low on Youth Development Index, 161 out of 181 countries surveyed. And images of the Nigerian army distributing clothes, food and groceries to repentant Boko Haram members causes division on social media. Should the government accept their repentance or prosecute them? Good morning and thanks for joining us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Middle of the week, we call it, or oh, I call it hump day. I am Osaogi Ogbawa. And I am Aneta Felix. Good morning. Good morning to you, Saudi. Good morning to you. Wow. So, um, the last story just shared about the terrorists receiving food items was shared by AMI spokesman Onyema Nwachuku um, yesterday. And it really caused a stare online and offline as well because we know what the anti terrorism situation has been in Nigeria for the past few years, for the past decade and more and how it has seemed to, you know, victory has seemed to elude the Nigerian military with all our efforts, you know, budgets um, for security and defense, you know, purchase of, you know, arms, ammunition, um, super lights, aircraft, and all of that, training of staff, hopefully. And then we're seeing this picture of, you know, repentant Boko Haram terrorists, people who have reportedly surrendered with placards, with inscriptions written in English, saying, Nigerians, please forgive us. Bornu State remains the home of peace, and so on and so forth. And we also see pictures of food items, toiletries, noodles, biscuits, clothes, all given or donated to these terrorists that have been, that have repented, so to speak. Lots of questions come to mind, really. Lots of questions, lots of questions. And people are really, really distraught because when you go to parts of the Northeast, parts of the Northern part of Nigeria, and you take a look at internally displaced persons camps, I have spoken to IDPs, people who have lost family, lost friends, have had to flee, walk, walk lots and lots of miles to find shelter because Boko Haram terrorists invaded their communities, attacked them, burnt down their houses, raped their women, killed their husbands, and they had to flee for safety, abducted their children. And then the government comes out to tell me, a Nigerian military whose duty is to protect lives, to defend the territorial integrity of Nigeria, the Nigerian military turns themselves from a defender to an NGO to begin to donate food items and palliatives to terrorists. Do you have any idea how much suffering Nigerians who have escaped you know, the onslaught of terrorism into IDP camps are facing? What about justice for those who have died? There's just lots of questions to be asked, and you wonder, what really is the role of the Nigerian military in that picture? Those palliatives should be donated to people who are suffering in IDP camps. Those items should be donated to people who need them, and those terrorists should be getting the justice they deserve. But maybe I'm missing something, Osarege. Help me out. Um, are you, well, I, <laughs> I think you're missing, you know, the fact that, you know, you're in Nigeria and... Um, I should expect you this. You know, so, so it's not, you know, you should expect this. I think, you know, what I, you know, have been asking, you know, since yesterday when I saw these uh, pictures was really, you know, how did we get here? Um, how is this normal? You know, how are we, am I insane? You know, I think that's a question you know, I should ask. You know, am, am I really insane? Um, is my brain functional at this, at this point? You know, with these images that I'm seeing, even if it's not the first time that we're hearing about forgiving, repentant Boko Haram and the fact that they, you know, a, a terrorist who repents, you know, can make it to the highest seat of the, you know, in the country and some statements like that. Um... So I got to a place where, you know, personally I was numb uh, for a bit because I couldn't really believe, you know, that this is our reality for today. This is where we are as a country. This is, this is what Nigeria is today. This is, you know, the true picture of what your country is. 
it's estimated about 350,000 lives um, have been, you know, affected, either lost or affected, you know, fully by the Boko Haram onslaught by terrorist onslaught in Nigeria um, since it started about a decade ago. Um, 350,000 lives that may never be the same. Um, I, so, if, I mean, if you notice, I'm, I'm short of words because I really don't even know how to express myself. There's a, there's a guy who uh, tweeted yesterday, they ask us to forgive Boko Haram terrorists, so we want to forgive IPOB members who, in deadly detention, we also want to forgive Namdi Kano on Sunday, Boho. We want to forgive all criminals in jail. We want to forgive everybody, everything, and everything, basically. Um, which you can't really argue with, because if you would, if the government itself is giving groceries, giving palliatives to terrorists, then what moral and what justification does the government have for anybody in jail today? What justification do we have for anybody who is in prison today or who is in court today in any part of Nigeria for any crime whatsoever, for stealing a goat, for slapping somebody, for murder, for anything whatsoever? What's the justification the government has for any of those people being in prison today? Um, there's a, a wife of, a, of, of an army so, soldier who lost his life um, who made a post and she said, you know, to the Nigerian army, it will never be well with you all. I should forgive them for making me a young widow. I should forgive them for killing my husband, his brother, and his mom. I should forgive them for making me seek shelter in another country. I should forgive them for making women widows and kids fatherless. I should forgive them for not paying what my late um, husband's dues. I should forgive them for the atrocities done to my family. Now, so, so, CM, and I've said it before, that... The, the country Nigeria would, I don't think that we would ever move forward or grow if we do not become honest with ourselves and do the right things um, at the right time. It makes me sick in my belly, and I really can't put my words together. It makes me sick to my stomach to see the Nigerian army itself. Because those placards that they're carrying, the they didn't write those you. things themselves. <laughs> they didn't write those things themselves. So it is very likely someone from the army that wrote those things on, on, on a, a cardboard sheets and gave to them to hold. That is what Nigeria is today. Those people very likely have killed Nigerians. They have shot people in their sleep. They have burned houses. They have chased people away. They have slaughtered Nigerians in their thousands. The Nigerian army is packing... One of them, according to, for them. to Onimount Wachiku, is that one of them is a um, Boko Ram bomb expert, meaning that he's been one of the people who go ahead and help out with all the ammunition that they use, all the bombs that they use to basically, you know, ambush the military and destroy lives. It's, it's, it's sad. For me, the question I really want to ask is, long term, what really will be the impact of this? Because... If terrorists are seeing what's happening to their colleagues, that they're being pampered, you know, you say you surrender and you get food items, you know, they give you noodles just in case you've forgotten the taste of it while you've been kidnapping people's children in, in the forest, they give you toiletries, they give you clothes, make you look good. When other terrorists see what's been done to their colleagues, how their colleagues have been treated, do you think they ever would want to lay down their arms? Because they will simply come back Use this as a means to, to, to basically get back ammunition, get back arms, you know, get back toiletries, connect with the community, get local intelligence, go back into hiding and continue the activities. So I, I, really, I really wonder what message this sends to people who have been victims. Because you just read out something from someone whose husband passed you know, on the war front. What message this really sends out? Imagine if my family had been a victim of this, and I see that this is what the Nigerian army is doing. Rather than met out justice, you are, you are pampering them. Yeah. How really would so, that make so me those, feel? And like you mentioned, those people in IDP camps today who, who, are, who are fatherless and you know, are orphans, who have lost siblings, lost relatives, lost neighbors, are watching TV today or looking at social media today and seeing the Nigerian army basically rewarding those people who committed those crimes, who killed those people. It's the same reason a lot of people say that, you know, there's a lot of unfairness and injustice in the country because, you know, you may as well do the same thing to ESN. The same ESN that you hound and you, you know, you storm Imo State and Anambra and Abia and, you know, you hound them and, and shoot and arrest and do whatever you can to these people. You may as well bring them out, you know, a week later and give them placards 
uh, cardboard sheets, you know, to, to write, please forgive us, Nigeria, we are sorry. And give them noodles also. Give them, you know, whatever, you know, the other brand that you choose to give them um, with salt and, you know, bags of, um, of water so that they can make good, good um, um, noodles for themselves noodles. with extra pepper. Um, you know, just to be... You're, you're basically rewarding terrorism. That's what you're doing. And people have always said it, that Nigeria rewards bad behavior, and that's why we're not moving anywhere. Because the people who should be punished for committing heinous crimes against the country, and it's not just terrorism now, in every single sector, including the Code of Conduct Tribunal Chairman, who is still in seat today, including the allegations against Issa Pantami, including every single person who has the governor of Kano State, who has been caught committing crime, Nigeria basically rewards bad behavior. I like the point you mentioned earlier, you know, talking about why the government does this to repentant Boko Haram terrorists and then go ahead to um, hound, you know, members of the ESN, raid the house of Igbo and Namdi Kanu. What really is good for the ghost should be good for the Ganda. If you are going ahead to say that these terrorists who have killed Nigerians in their numbers since the year 2009 can be pampered, can receive, you know, uh, benevolence of the Nigerian military. So how about people like Inamdi Kanu who you can't, I mean, when you look at all the charges against him, you would not be able to put murder there. He's not killed anyone as far as we know, as far as the charges, you know, against him show. So why... Are we not getting the same treatment for Nnamdi Kano and Sunday Buho and every other person? How about the thousands of Nigerian youth who are in prison for doing absolutely nothing, just being at the wrong place at the wrong time? So we, justice needs to be across board. We need to be able to see that the government is equal. The government, I mean, everyone should be equal in the eyes of the law. If the Boko Haram terrorists who are killing people can be getting this kind of treatment, what then would you say for people like Nnamdi Kano? People like Sunday Buhu and the thousands of Nigerian youth. How about the Shia? That are exactly. How about how about the IMN? You know. So if um, you are going to enforce the, the law, people? enforce the law all round. The... If you're not going to enforce the law, do not do that all round. Like because it, it doesn't make sense that you pick and choose how you want to be fair. The um, you look at the cardboard sheets. They're written in different colors. No terrorist in Nigeria, and I, they, I, I would say loud and clear, no terrorist in Nigeria that has been carrying AK-47 for the last 10 years Have had the bad. time to select three different colors to write uh, uh, surrender and leave. That's why people say this is propaganda, really. Uh, uh, whatever word you choose to use, there's no terrorist in the whole country that had the time to take three different colors of, you know, of, uh, markers, to write surrender in red, write and in green, and write, you know, live in blue. So this isn't them asking for, for the mercy military, or, for, or for forgiveness. The Nigerian, the Nigerian military have disappointed a lot of Nigerians. From, what, from the response we've seen online, we can tell that the Nigerian military has disappointed a lot of people. We're not happy about what they've done. Who, who, people would rather have justice. People would rather have these people being tried. People would rather have these people facing the punishment for their crimes, for terrorism. I mean, that's one of the highest offenses you can ever commit, terrorism. Free terrorism Evans. against the country. Free Evans, free every so, other person who... I, 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 really, I really don't know where we're going from here. Let's quickly move on to our next top trending story. Uh, it's still about the North. And this time around, it's an impromptu test. Pity teachers who didn't take a new look at their lesson notes and textbooks that day, because what happened was that the governor of Borno State, Governor Zulum, um, actually um, gave a surprise visit to teachers in some schools in the States. Um, people have talked about oh, his camera crew and how he showed up with his reality cam and uh, just sprung up on the teachers conducting an impromptu test for them. People have talked, first of all, they noticed that there were no female teachers, no surprise there. People have looked at the questions on the board and said there are things wrong with that. People have asked questions, is it the job of the governor to do that? We've seen um, former governor um, Adam Soshomele do similar things like this in a Edo state. People have said, oh, he just wants to be seen to be working, you know. I, 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 really well, don't, I, I, really, I really have no comments. Yeah, that but I, I personally wouldn't, you know, join with those who say he's trying to, be, you know, be seen to be working. Yes, you could do all these things without a camera, but, you know, as a governor, he's barely going to go anywhere without, you know, cameras. Um, His media him. aids and all of uh, that. Exactly. So those things will always show up. You know, whether he's doing it, I don't agree that, you know, he's just doing it to be working because I feel like... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's part of governance, you know, to once in a while want to see for yourself. 
um, to once in a while want to be sure that the, the people that you put in in um, in office, uh, you you know, as commissioners, are doing the jobs that you ask them to do. Um, I remember, you know, back a couple of years ago, maybe tw between 2010, between 20, 2008 and like 2010, 2012, uh, Governor Sullivan Chime in Enugu State used to drive around by himself and look at street lights, look at, uh, you know, roads, you know, check for, you know, portals, make sure that the traffic lights are working by himself. And when, you know, there was a fault, he would call the commissioner for works and ask him why this particular street light has not been on for the last one day or the last two days. He, he did that. So, you know, these things happen. You know, the, the only challenges that I have are with the, the state of the school in that Oga is inspecting. Is that a blackboard or is the wall just painted black? Exactly. The you know, wall with, was painted what black. What exactly is that? You know, what, what is the state of infrastructure in the school that he's inspecting? Shouldn't that be some of the concerns that he has um, for the, the, the pupils who attend these schools? That's one thing that I, I um, um, mentioned or that I noticed. And also, like you mentioned, is there a commissioner for education? Should we have been there also with him? But just in case he was, you know, bored, you know, some afternoon and decided to take a drive around and, and so, you know, do that. The questions on the board also, are those questions that, you know, teachers at their level should be answering? They, they be pretty, I, don't, I really don't know how he came about that. Um, and also, you know, are the schools safe? Um, in Borno State today, you know, while you're inspecting whether the teachers can teach, are we sure 100% that those schools are safe for people to even go to um, and learn, seeing the spate of kidnappings that have happened in the North in the last couple of years? Um, but once again... Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with him doing what he's doing. I feel he should do the same thing with the roads in Borno. So I have never been to Borno. Um, he should do the same thing with the roads. He should do the same thing with water. Do the same thing with electricity. Whatever it is, you know, that he feels is necessary. He should go to a hospital and see how people are faring. See the level of, you know, the kind of service that people are receiving. Pregnant mother, uh, uh, women, you see what they're receiving in every hospital in Borno State. Every now and then. It makes, it makes um, commissioners to be on their feet because they know that they can never tell when the governor would decide to pay a surprise visit to any of these um, MDAs or any of these institutions. And, you know, okay, might so, be trouble. Okay, so two more things I want to add to this. First of all, we've seen people say, when are they going to post these results? They would love to see how the teachers fared in that impromptu test. Second of all... Um, one of them there looked like it was fine. <laughs> oh my God. If you look at the pictures clearly, one of them was it's looking like... like <laughs> Is it option A or B? <laughs> All right. So um, the second thing I was going to say is it's great that, you know, governors can pay this impromptu visits, you know, to put people in the toes to make sure that they do the right thing. That's good. But long term, what would be the impact of this? Because this is just one school out of, you know, so many in the States, in, you know. So the methodology really is my concern because I need to be able to, I need to be sure, or Bonu residents need to be sure that, if the governor has education as one of his priorities, it's something he's able to do um, statewide, right? You're able to maybe organize more teacher training, something like that, to ensure that you know teachers are tested periodically, not just one day and that's that. Yeah. Only God knows if he will get the results. Only God it knows. Could... Okay, for people who don't don't get maybe for people who get below 80 percent, what's going to happen? Would they be fired? Would the people who get above 80 percent, you know? Or the people who get below 80%, would they be fired? Would they be sent for more training? The people who score very well, would they be promoted? So really, what are the mechanisms? That's why I'm saying that this is something that should be structured statewide to make sure that whatever you're doing has an impact. Yeah. It's not just a, a, a camp thing that everybody talks about for a day and then it dies out. I, I agree with that. Um, um, and, and I'm sure that he has you know, a plan or has an idea what he's trying to achieve with regards Hopefully. to education in Borno State. Um, Northern states have always, if you look at the education rankings in the country, have never really been, you know, on the you know, forefront. They've never really, you know, been there. Um, and so maybe he's trying to improve on the level of education, try to improve the level of uh, the teach quality of teaching that uh, students receive. So maybe, you know, they can come out top of the class in WIAC examinations, which are coming up next week, um, and some of all of that. So. Good luck to you. All Bonner right, State. finally, in that top training, we're talking, still talking education. So, WIAC exams are shortly coming up soon. Um, we we'll saw a statement from WIAC, um, that's the head of the Nigerian office, Mr. Patrick, uh, went on to announce on Tuesday that the exams will hold from the 16th of August to 8th of October 2021. Um, he said that there are about 1.6 million candidates that are expected to participate in the WIAC exams um, you know, for this year. He said also 25,000 senior teachers will be appointed as supervisors for the examination. Um, we know that this was actually supposed to start around May, June, but he, they also expressed, you know, um, 
concerns that you know the COVID-19 pandemic made them to shift it up until this time in August. So if you have registered for your WIAC exams or you have family who have, it will be starting um, next week till Friday, the 8th of October, 2021. And best of luck to all the um, students or uh, people who's writing uh, WIAC exams. We hope that they, well, we hope that they all pass. Yes, yeah, just, just simply possible. to just throw this in. We saw a statement from NECO as well mentioning that they were not aware of any sit at home order in the Southeast. Yeah. So my, my worry is for students who were not able to go out for their own personal safety, did they just miss a whole paper? Um, so I'm sure, I, well, I really don't know. You know, they are saying they're not aware. Um, I've, I haven't also heard any parents complaining that their students missed um, out on exams. So I think we should just wait, you know, and see if there is actual concerns in the Southeast, you know, for people who say, oh, we couldn't write exams um, because of the sit-at-home order. Um, if, if schools also had to be shut down because of the sit-at-home order or not. So I think we'll probably just hold on and see how that uh, plays out because, mm -hmm. you know, they're saying they didn't hear. Um, I also would like to hear from parents or from schools who say that they couldn't hold any exams until there is that, you know, then it, you know, I think, I don't think there's, you know, a cost, concern. cost for yeah. concern. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, those are our top trending stories today. Nigerian Army donating food items to repentant Boko Haram terrorist also told you about that impromptu test that governor babagana zulum of Vodou state you know conducted for teachers in the state and as well um that the wike exams will begin august 16th till october the 8th i will take a break here to join our guests on standby for off the press